Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Now I have got two amazing recipes for this week for you. We're going gluten free. Who knew it? Peter Sidwell's going gluten free on a cake. I am not known for my gluten free recipes, but I've got an incredible lemon cake for you, but we've actually added courgettes and apple and fresh thyme from the garden, just to give it a real depth of flavor. And then we've got lemon and cream cheese topping. It is gonna be delicious. We're gonna cut it in half and send half with Emily for her mum, cause she's gluten free. I'm gonna send the other half to Emma's school cause there is a teacher there who's gluten free and always complains cause I don't send gluten free cakes. So Jane, it's coming your way. And then after that, I'm gonna show you how to make potted smoked salmon with a really easy but delicious German rye bread. It's really tasty, really simple, and a great way to enjoy smoked salmon. But first, let's get on with a cake. Now, need mixing bowl. So we're gonna start off with our eggs. So I have got um, two large free range eggs going in first. Do you do much gluten-free baking? I do now. You do now? Um, it came across a quite a, a lot easier than I thought. It, I thought it would have been yeah. quite a complicated thing to use. But it's just, once you get your head around it, it's actually quite easy to incorporate into yeah. the baking. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we should swap. No, I don't think we should. Right, in with vegetable oil. This is really going to help keep it nice and moist, OK? So the, between that and the apple and the courgette that we're going to put in, then I've got my caster sugar in there. So all the wet ingredients together. So it's a, it's a little bit like a muffin recipe actually, where you do wet and dry. I kind of like the idea of putting vegetables into a cake, because it's like, it's not well, your most obvious choice, but I the, mm, the reason why we're courgetting is because my in-laws, my mother and father-in-law, uh, grew more courgettes than the world needs. <laughs> and we have had multiple deliveries of courgettes on the back door this past few weeks. So anything with courgettes in, in our house <laughs> is a must. So like we would do, so last week when I did the Victoria sponge, we were beating the sugar and the butter together to get it to dissolve. We're doing the same here with the oil and the sugar and the eggs. So it's really about getting the fat to dissolve with the sugar. And it will sort of start to ribbon up a little bit really. Okay, so there we go, that's in, okay? So now we're going to take our courgette and our apple, and I put in two lemons in, the zest of, because I just flipping love lemon. It's one of my absolute favorites. So, gonna grate uh, my courgette straight in on the coarse grater, okay? So, you know there's a question coming from this. Go on then. If you don't like courgettes, or if you don't have courgettes, what other vegetables could you use? Carrot. Very similar to a carrot cake recipe, really. Um, pumpkin. You could grate pumpkin into it. Mm. Mm. Butternut squash, sweet potato. Yeah, you did see, you thought I was going to struggle with the answer that one, didn't you? You thought you'd got me. <laughs> but no. I'll get you. Right. So last week, we made the most incredible... Uh, couscous recipe with a sweet sticky glazed chicken in pomegranate with sesame seeds and I put tin peaches and feta into the couscous. Emma, Emily even? <laughs> Shocking that. Emily was a doubter. Emily, what did you think? It was very, very, very tasty, I'll give you that. Okay. One of our best recipes this year so far? I, I would say it's also, it's a contender. See, it's up there, when I did um, with Carlos, we did um, Italian flatbreads with that. fennel, ham, mascarpone. Oh my God, that was so good. <laughs> I can't decide. For me, those two recipes are right up there with the best we've done this year. So if you didn't watch it, go back and watch it. They're on Facebook, they're on YouTube, they're on Instagram uh, TV. You can watch them all and get all the recipes. Scan the QR code on the bottom or go to masterclass.co and you'll get it there. Right. Back to this, so apple. I'm gonna go straight in, I'm not peeling the apple, because if I do, I'll have to do it all in one go with the Y peeler, and I don't think it matters. So I'm just grating the apple till I get to the core, and I reckon Pip would like the core, apple core. It's funny, my wife comes home every day from work, and she eats an apple while she's driving home. 
And every day, Pip, our Labrador, for those of you who don't know who Pip is, will sit at the door and wait for Emma to walk in with her apple core. So I'm going to confuse her now with an apple core. So we'll hang on to that for Pip. So we've now got our fruit in. Now, there's lots of moisture gone in here as well, actually. And when I first started sort of developing this recipe, I was a bit worried about the moisture content from the courgettes and the apples. But actually, it's bang on. There's nothing to worry about, okay? So we're going to add in some sultanas. We're going to add in a little bit of ground ginger because I just think it helps the flavour. It works really well. It's not a primary flavour, so it's not a ginger cake. It's a lemon courgette cake, um, and the ginger just elevates things, okay? And then I've got some fresh thyme, okay? So I'm going to grab my scissors. Again, I'm not going to chop this with a knife because it doesn't need it. All I'm going to do is just snip the thyme. And it, this is actually lemon thyme, but you can use normal garden thyme as well. It doesn't matter. Lemon thyme is just a little bit more fragrant. Um, and again, it's not a really heavy primary flavour. The combination of all these flavours together is what makes it delicious. Together. Now, in with our zest of the lemons. So, my favourite zester. So you can get this. So all the equipment that I use in my kitchen um, is all available on Cook, Serve and Enjoy. So if there's ever anything you see and you think, where on earth did he get that from? Just go to cookserveandenjoy.com. You can get it there. All right, but all our recipes are on masterclass.co website. Um, so obviously you're using lemons. Could you mm. use things like other citruses like limes? And yeah, lemons? yeah, you can. Uh, limes you could use, you could use oranges, you could use grapefruit if you really want to sort of go for it. But I do quite like my grapefruits and my gin and tonics, so I don't tend to have many pink grapefruits in this house. But, um, yeah, I mean, lemon works really well. Yeah. The fragrance and the acidity work well. Limes are a little bit sharper. Um, so, but yeah. And then I think oranges just haven't got the same acidity. But yeah. you could do a lemon and an orange. That's yeah. no problem. Easy. Okay, so let me just grab a juicer. And we will get the lemons juiced as well. And get those in there. Okay. So... Again, this is going to help with the acidity. It's just going to give it a really good burst of acidity and get the flavour running through. And remember, don't throw your lemons away. Chuck them in your big jam jar with salt in, ready for the next tagine you make, all right? Preserved lemons are amazing. You can't buy them easily. You can't get that flavour. Um, is this a recipe you can like, make into like muffins? Yeah. What is it? Is like a yeah, you could, I mean, it is a muffin recipe. Really, with the wet, with the whole wet and dry method. Mm. Um, and if you don't want to make gluten-free, you could just swap out the gluten-free flour for traditional self-raising flour, no problem. So, I'm going to sieve in my flour, and we're actually going to bake this as a loaf. Okay. So I'm just going to sieve that in. Make sure we get plenty of air in there because we want a nice rise on this cake. Okay. It always used to bother me when I make, make gluten-free cakes. I was mm. like, it works exactly, it does work exactly the same way. Yeah, I mean, um, cake baking's not reliant on gluten no. as much as, as sort of breads and things like that. Gluten-free breads are yeah. tough to make. Yeah. My mum struggles to find a, a yeah. decent bread, but cakes and things like that, even down to like savoury bakes and things mm. like that, Dude, it's not as scary as people possibly no, think no. it is. So, in with the flour. And we're just going to let that sit for a minute just to absorb. Glute, I find gluten-free flour quite absorbent. It sort of sucks up the liquid, which is why this recipe works, because of the moisture content from the courgettes and the apples. But you can kind of see we've got, you know, loads of ingredients, loads of flavour in there because of all the lemons. Now... I'm going to use um, my Masterclass loaf tin. So this is a smart space, all right, because it's a vertical. So you store it in the cupboard that way, and it takes up loads less space. So when you fill your cupboard up with all these different vertical stack products, this one isn't at the bottom, all right? You can just get to them really easily. So let's get it straight in. This is a non-stick tin. It's a bit like a carrot cake, to be honest, this recipe. Um, it's very, sort of reminds me very much of that kind of a cake. So that's going into the oven. 
about 30 minutes at 170. Now, just remember, a lot of moisture in this cake. Okay, so give it the time it needs. Check it with a skewer, it needs to come out clean. All right, so press the top if it's firm, put a skewer in. If it comes out clean, it's baked. If not, give it 10 more minutes. Just keep your eye on it, but remember, big moisture in this cake. Okay, my cake is baking in the oven, shouldn't take too long. Once it's cooled, we're gonna to top it with a lovely cream cheese lemon icing. But while all that's happening, I thought I'd show you how to make the most delicious potted smoked salmon um, with fennel, chili, and uh, lemon. And we're gonna serve it with the most amazing German rye bread. It's super easy, and this is how I made it. <laughs> how I made my German rye bread and once it's cooled it's really easy to slide out because I use the uh, smart ceramic non-stick baking tin from Masterclass and then oh, rye bread with the treacle the caraway in there it is absolutely delicious um, it's quite a sort of dense robust bread so don't expect it to be this big light and fluffy white bloomer but if I just cut into this and you can see, do you like a rye bread, Emily? I do actually. Have a try of that, see what you think. It is, Ooh, oh, it's delicious. Toasted with marmalade on, it is so good. Mm. Mm. Can you imagine that with smoked salmon though? It's gonna be delicious, isn't yeah. it? Mm. I love this bread, it's really, really tasty. Right, while I'm nibbling that, Mm. so good make that that's really good okay right let's bring our ingredients in now I've got a block of salted butter okay even the dog Pip is sat staring at Emily as each bite goes in all right oh no she's up she wants some rye bread too okay so we've got a block of butter going in the pan now I want to warm this up but I don't want to cook the butter okay it's really important, all we're trying to do is melt the butter and we are using the butter to amalgamate all the flavours together. All right? You like that, don't you? Mm. Mm. Poor old Pip. She's desperate for a bit, but she's not having it. Right, okay, so while that is going, let's get the chilli on. So I quite like a little bit of chilli in this, it's optional. If you don't like fresh chilli, you don't like the heat, don't put it in, okay? So I'm just gonna fold the chilli out and then remove the seeds carefully. So I've got a nice flat knife, and then I'm just running the knife parallel, and I'll remove the seeds really easily there, yeah? And then we're gonna slice it into matchsticks. Mm. Mm. There's lots of good noises going on in this kitchen at the moment, mainly for me and Emily go, mmm, mmm, nice. And then we're just going to turn the chilies around the next way and cut them into nice, fine little dice, okay? Now, if you can't get fresh chili or you haven't got it, use some chili flakes. They'll be fine. Just do be sparing. Because they're dry, they're hotter. So the fresh chili is a lot milder, okay? So I'm just going to pop that straight <coughs> in. <laughs> Pip, shush. Honestly. Sorry about that. 
Can't really stop a dog barking, can you, when she's desperate for something? So we just move the butter around. As, as I said before, I don't want the butter to cook, just trying to melt it, all right? And we're gonna amalgamate those flavors together. Now, fennel seed to reinforce that fennel. Fennel and smoked salmon are just made for each other. They're amazing together, right? So fennel seeds, I really like, because when you eat it, sometimes you bite into the fennel seed, you just get that explosion of aniseed flavor running through and it all just works perfectly. Right, so while that's going on, I'm just gonna grab the lemon zest. Where's my zester? Here it is. So I'm gonna whack the zest in as well so we get the fragrance, not the acidity. So when you're adding lemon, zest you get fragrance, juice you get acidity, okay? So we're gonna use the lemon juice for pickling the fennel, but we're gonna use the zest for the fragrance and the flavor, okay? So. Is there any other, like, so obviously your, it's, it's fennel, it's chili, you can yeah, use, yeah. is there any other different flavor combinations you could put? Yeah, you could put a bit of tarragon in would be quite nice, that sort of more, aniseed flavor. It's similar to fennel, but you know, if you haven't got fennel, add a bit of dried tarragon works really well because dried tarragon as a herb is one of the very few herbs that's quite nice dried, but it is very strong, so you need to be careful. Right, so that butter, the residual heat is about there. So I'm just gonna turn the heat off and leave that to one side while we turn our attention to the fennel. Now. Cut into this, Emily. Cut into this, right. See that little bit of the fennel there? That's the herb. Keep that, all right? So the good thing about fennel is you get a herb and you get a vegetable with it, which is brilliant. So cut the bottom off and then cut it in half long ways. And then can you see that little core there, Emily? Yeah. So with a knife, sort of cut a triangle and that'll remove that core we don't want that bit because it won't render and it won't pickle. It'll just say really, really tough and it's not very pleasant to eat. Okay, and we'll do the same with this. Pop that one out. Now, with a knife, so I'm gonna shred this really, really fine. So I'm gonna use my 20 centimeter edge keeper. And do you see, Emily, how I'm just slicing as thin as I can possibly do? You can almost see the knife through it. Yeah, yeah. And the thinner it is, in my opinion, the nicer it is to eat and the quicker it pickles. And you know, the quicker it pickles, the quicker I'm gonna eat it. So just nice and thin. Now, if you can't use a knife like that or you're not comfortable, these mandolins are absolutely brilliant. They're from Sheffern, okay, which is, you can get it on Cook, Serve and Enjoy. This is a brilliant little mandolin for having at home. In like, I can show you how quickly it works. It's brill. So you've got an angle there and you can adjust it. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for as thin as I possibly can and then just like that, okay? And then stop. As soon as you get to a point where like, ooh. I mean, it comes with a guard as well and I would urge you to use the guard, but me being me, I don't, okay? And you get a really thin, fine shred, but if you want to improve your chef skills and your knife skills, which to be honest, most people are like, oh, I wish I could cut like you. It's just roll your knife through and cut it as thin and as you possibly can. All right, nice and thin. Okay. Right. Now, any offcuts that you've got, all right? Use them. Uh, tin of tomatoes, fennel tops, clove of garlic, put it on the pan with a stock cube, cook it down, you've got the most amazing Tuscan style tomato sauce. So don't throw those bits away, use them, okay? So, just to make a little bit more, keep the fennel herb, cut the bottom off, slice it long ways, and then we will just Cut that core out, get rid of that. Same again, get rid of that. Now, if you have any questions, make sure you post them in the comments below. I am here to help, all right? So whether it's about this particular recipe or if you've got a bit of a culinary conundrum, that's a good word for you, isn't it? Mm. See, I, I never use words that I can't spell, but Got I've used that one. No, conund con no, can't do it. <laughs> so, 
slice nice and thin. All okay, right, take your time. And this is where edge keeper knives really come into their own because, because they come with a, a guard with a sharpener in it. They're always sharp. And you can do things like this. All right? So, Mum, if you're watching, you need to get an edge keeper knife because your knives are terrible. They have been for 25 years. She's probably waiting for me to buy her some new ones. <laughs> there you go, Christmas sorted. Yeah. It was my mum's 70th birthday last week and we bought her a hot air balloon ride over Ullswater. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, yeah. that's cool. And then I read in the news this morning that there was an air balloon crash in Italy and it crashed into a monument and knocked it over. So <laughs> hopefully my mum doesn't read the same news as me. But no, yeah, over Ullswater. Oh, wow. It'd be nice, that, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because Ullswater is just over Clough Head over there. So as the crow flies, they'll just be over there. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> they'll be able to wave, wave to you. Well, it, they might come over this way. Because yeah. obviously hot air balloons, they don't follow roads, do they? They just go where they like, which is quite nice. So there you go. Right. Okay. So got my fennel and look how finely cut it is. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Really finely shred. Now let's get our fennel into a bowl. And then we are going to pickle it with our lemon juice. All right. So two lemons, just squeeze the juice over. So you can do it by hand if you want to use a juicer. I'm quite strong so I can really juice these but if you aren't get a juicer all right because you want to get all the juice out you don't want to waste your time use fresh lemons do not use bought lemon juice it's pasteurized and it's just not it's not as fresh and say, nice as it. it turn them inside out if you can you always get more juice out of them like that there we go right lovely so Get your hand in and really scrunch the juice into the fennel and it will break the chambers down and it just means the pickle will happen a little bit quicker. And the reason why we've pickled it is because it's going to cut the richness of the butter and the salmon. Okay, so we're going to leave that to one side. Just going to have a quick wipe down. Fancy this dish then, Emily? Is this yeah, your kind of thing? I've, I've always been sceptical of, of <laughs> salmon like this. That's not like you, Emily. <laughs> Emily's always sceptical, and then she's like, oh, yeah, really nice, it, that. I've never seen it be made before, so I, th I think seeing it be freshly mm. made is different. This is a good Christmas, get ready for Christmas type dish, because once you've prepped this, you could prep this in November and put it in the fridge, and as long as it's covered in plenty of butter, or freeze it, and then you just get it out, and you can either just, it's a tuck-in kind of thing, or it's cut them into little t nibbles and do it like that. It's, you could do what you like with it. Right, I'm just going to slice the smoked salmon up. Now, I'm very lucky in the Lake District. Um, I have a friend who has a smoked salmon business and we have the best smoked salmon up here. Um, and it's absolutely delicious. So buy your favourite, you know. And you don't actually have to use smoked salmon. It's probably stolen one of your questions there, have I, Emily? Yeah. Can you hear the squeaky toy? That's Pip. <laughs> no. But what else could you use? Then? You could use smoked mackerel if you wanted to. You, there are smoked trouts that you could use. If you're really flush, you could use smoked halibut. Oh. That's nice. A couple of years ago, I got a, a side of smoked halibut sent from one of the islands of Scotland. It was amazing. Right. So the salmon is in the butter. Shall I move this over here, Emily? Yeah. Is that better? Yes. Now, we've taken it off the heat. All we've done is melt the butter, all right? And now all I'm going to do is just lift the salmon and kind of move it around the butter because I want the butter and the salmon to amalgamate together and the flavours to kind of, the smoked salmon flavour to seep into the butter and then the richness of the butter to kind of absorb into the salmon. And together, magic is made. It is really, really good. So don't be heavy-handed. Be really gentle. Sorry, but the dog is going mental with a cuddly toy over there at the minute. So I'm just 
I'm letting the butter cool down and I'm stirring it together because I want the butter to get in every little nook and cranny. All right? Can you see that? I can. Yeah. Now, this. Let me cut you a little bit to taste before we even preserve it, Emily. I'm All right. Are you a bit skeptical about this? Scared. Are you? Yeah. <gasps> That's why I do it. Because <laughs> it's fun. Right. So. This is before it's even set, all right? And I'll get you a little piece of that pickled fennel. Just, here you go, have a little try of this. Go on, <laughs> have a little go on that and tell me what you think. I'm gonna have a little taste as well because it's just gonna be epic, all right? Mm. What do you think? Oh, that's good. Mm. You're gonna like this. Right. That is delicious. I think it needs a little bit of black pepper. All right. No salt because smoked salmon has been cured with salt and sugar. So it's naturally slightly salty anyway and it's got salted butter in there. So it doesn't need it, all right? So now it's at this stage. Grab yourself a jar. Now I've got one of the Kitchen Craft uh, homemade jars we use I have a whole wall full of preserving jars with different stuff in, all right? And I use them all the time. They are such a sound investment. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna spoon the salmon in. Okay. So what do you think of it, Emily? That is delicious. So much so, I've got, I've got pips sitting on my feet. Do you know what also is a really great way of serving this? Just spoon it straight over tagliatelle, fresh pasta. And you've got a really quick, simple, delicious pasta dish as well. So you don't have to use it as a sort of topping on rye bread or anything like that. You could just do this for dinner. Okay, and once you've got a jar full, just spoon the butter on. And I, what I want you to do is use the back of the spoon and just press the salmon underneath the butter. And that's what will preserve it, okay? How long will this last for in the fridge, please? Well, if you get a really, really good seal with the butter, weeks and weeks and weeks, but keep it in the fridge. So if you dig into it, would you melt more butter to seal it on top? Yeah, I mean, the whole sort of preserving method is like sealing it under butter. And can you see that? You see how it's sort of sealed in? Yeah. And then you pop the jar on, you pop the lid on and then into the fridge. And that will keep it. And and. I would keep this for at least four to six weeks, no problem at all. Yeah. Um, but it's so easy to use and so versatile. Honestly, that stirred through fresh pasta is just so delicious as a midweek supper. Um, it's almost luxurious without effort, but it's perfect for Christmas. It's absolutely delicious. I'm going to pop that in the fridge and then I'm going to show you how to serve it up. So you like that, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so I've got my fennel now. Now I'm gonna add a little olive oil. I didn't add the olive oil straight away because I wanted the lemon juice to pickle the fennel and really penetrate into there and make sure that it's got that acidic fennel shape, flavor. Now, in with a little olive oil and we're gonna mix this together. And then, you remember the fennel tops that we hung on to? Let's add those in now. Okay. Could you serve the fennel with? Oh, really nice on tomato salad. So instead of putting like red onion in a tomato salad, pickled fennel. Um, it's really delicious with roast pork. Mm. Fennel and pork work well. Tomato and fennel work well. Fish and fennel work really well. So you've got lots of options. So I'm just going to add that fennel in there. And then let's grab our delicious German rye bread, which you are now a big fan of, aren't you, yeah. Emily? So a couple of slices of that. And then take your potted salmon on there. Just sit some on there. And then pickled fennel on top. And that is how to make my delicious potted smoked salmon with pickled fennel and homemade German-style rye bread. Now, if you want the recipe, scan the QR code on the bottom or go to masterclass.co. You can get it there. Um, 
The lemon and courgette cake is almost out of the oven. I am simply going to top it once it's cooled with a lovely cream cheese icing with a bit of lemon juice in there. It'll be absolutely delicious. All the recipes are there so you can make them yourself. Thank you very much for joining us and I will see you on the next episode.